Hello George Boy. thanks for having us here this morning. Before we get started on the horses, I just want to give our viewers a chance to get to know you a bit more. So can you just tell us, where did this all start? How did you get into the sport of horse racing? Uh, I know it's been, a, it's been a passion of mine for a long time, since I was a sort of teenager really before then. And um, I think I was never going to be a jockey. I wasn't, wasn't sort of capable enough and um, probably a bit too big. So you know, training has been something that I wanted to do for, for a long time. And I never thought it would quite scale to where it has quite so quickly but um yeah look, I, I love it it's been a passion for a while farming was sort of my introduction dad's a farmer down in dorset and horses were always sort of around but um yeah look it's i, I worked for hugo palmer for six years having come back from australia and um hugo was a huge mentor to me and um still is you know he's he's a super trainer and um i learned plenty of him you mentioned hugo palmer there. that could be your answer to this next question who was your sporting idol growing up <laughs> um Good question. I don't really know. I think you know a lot of, a lot of racing characters. Frankie Dettori, A.P. McCoy, Henry Cecil. You know, lots of um, people that you look up to, and you hope that you can achieve something in in your field as half as good, quarter as good as them. Um, but no, look, I think those those that I mentioned there. And what did Cashier's One Thousand Guineas win mean for the yard and you on a personal level? That was great. It was. Um, you know, you dream of things like happening like that once in your life, let alone in, after two and a half years of training or whatever it was. And um, no, she was a superstar and um, very, very special day. And I think, you know, for, for everyone that works for us here and Aidy Rogers, my head lad, who started when we first came, had three horses. And um, it's, it's come an awful long way. And I think it was a real sort of crowning moment for us that we'd had a winner at the top level. It's incredibly hard. and. Um, no, it was, a, it was a good party anyway. And what are your goals? If you look 10, 20 years into the future, what do you want to have achieved as a trainer? I think it's, it's having winners at the big meetings, at the top level, Group 1 level, and um, places like Ascot. We had two winners at Epsom this year, and it was a huge thrill, I think. You know, to, to have winners on those days is where you want to be. And, and I think around the world, you know, we had three winners in Dubai this winter, and we've had three in France already. So um, top level racing, really. And if you weren't training horses, what do you think you'd be doing now? It's a very good question. I think I'd be unemployed, but um, no, it's it's always been racing. So something in something in the sort of equine field, really. But um, very lucky to be in the position I am. All right, we'll get stuck into the horses now. And you're our Alaska team. Looks a pre uh, pretty strong one this year. We'll start with the two-year-olds and a Sadna who looked so impressive at Ripon. We won by 12 lengths. Clocked a really good time figure for a two-year-old debut cent. Were you expecting that sort of performance from I him from what you'd seen at home? Don't think we were expecting quite the show that he put on. Um, he'd been working on on slower ground at home than we saw at Ripon and, and he actually got a little bit unbalanced. I think you can upgrade his performance and um, we'll need to see fast ground for him to see the best horse at Ascot. So the weather forecast is a, is a little bit iffy at the moment, um, but look, he's he's in good shape and he's got an amazing constitution, amazing mind and um, he's a horse we're really looking forward to, whether it be at Ascot or, or, or on, you know, on to Goodwood afterwards. Do you think he's an out-and-out -out sprinter or do you think he could stay a bit further? Yeah, I do. He's, he's a pretty set two-year-old. Um, he's not overly big. Uh, he's by Memas, who you know, was a two-year-old, and, and he's, he seems to have a pretty similar constitution to his father. So, um, yeah, I'd imagine we'll be making plenty of use of him as a two-year-old. And what have you seen from him at home since Ripon? Have you seen some improvement? Yeah, I have. He, he looks better physically. Um, he's got a better shine to his coat, and I'm very pleased with him. Oshie Murphy rode him at Chelmsford the other day, William Buett rode him this morning and um, they're all very happy with him. So Oshie actually has a big part to play in the horse. He, he, he put the horse to me as a, as a breezer. So um, Hamish McCauley bought him and um, yeah, there'll be a few people rooting for him at, at the big meeting. Looks a particularly hot Coventry this year, but you're going there with full of confidence with this lad? Yeah, no, we, we just do the best with our horse that we can. Um, I think in the handicaps, you probably look at other horses a bit more than in the stakes races. Um, it is the obvious race for him. We're not going to drop back to five furlongs. There's no other six furlong race. So look, he, he comes there in good shape. He, 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 he trained great this morning. He scoped clean. He's, he's ready to rock and roll. And you had William Buick on him at Ripon. He was on him this morning. Will he be, be on him at Ascot? Yeah, he will. It's um, obviously unfortunate for Godolphin not to have, a, to have a horse in the race, but William rides for us when he can. And um, you know we're very lucky to have sort of second preference to him. And, um, obviously, he always rides in blue when he can, but it's um, a huge pleasure to have him at, at Royal Ascot for, for, for a sad night. And another nice two-year-old is Soprano, who um, she was seemingly well fancied on debut, which she'd been showing you plenty at home before yeah, Newmarket. She, she had, she'd, um, she'd been showing up good. She'd been showing up better than 
any two year old I've I've had so far. Um, only our fourth year, but um, her work had been very strong. She worked with Padika, who uh, I think had, had shown already what a good filly she was. So to to work with her was a compliment to her you know, ability, really. And she stepped forward notably since then. She's a bigger, stronger filly, and um, I hope that we'll see a pretty good performance. Um, she worked fine on the all weather at Chelmsford the other day, but she was much better this morning back on turf. And um, yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing her turn up Ascot. And she goes to Ascot with just that one run under her belt. Was that always the plan? Yeah, I think so. She, you know, we got to run into her possibly a bit sooner than, than we'd have liked. Um, I'd like to wait a couple more weeks, but it allowed us to give her a bit of downtime afterwards and, and build her back up for the big day. And she's fit and ready to go and um, couldn't be happier. And the farm got a nice boost the other day when the second won the Hillary Needler. Yeah, it did. I, I, the horse was highly fancied before the race, and um, Danny Tudop said after the Hillary Needler, Hillary Needler that he didn't think that we'd have beaten her on the day, but she was a little bit unlucky in running, and, and she showed a real good turn of foot the other day. I, I think they're staying to five furlongs, and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they both go. And will William Boot be on her too? He will, yeah. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's great to have Will to ride both of our sort of top two-year-old hopes, and... Um, He's, he's become a big part of the team over the last few years and written lots of winners for us. And the three-year-olds now and with Al Dasim, who he's been a revelation since joining the yard. When he won his first race for you at Wolverhampton on a Wednesday evening, did you get him home and think, this is my Commonwealth Cup horse? Uh, no, I didn't, but I did think he had a high level of form. Um, he, he was a raw horse when he came and he's mentally he's improved a lot. He's physically obviously changed since the autumn of his two-year-old career, but... Um, I hope to do what he did in Dubai. He's tailor-made for that sort of racing and fast ground, and he'll need fast ground to show his best at Royal Ascot for sure. He's, his work is not as good on on slower surfaces, um, I don't think. Um, hence, he didn't run at Haydock. But um, yeah, I couldn't be happy with him, and um, he's got a he's got a big bear to beat and little big bear. But um, we'll go there with a live each way chance, I'd hope. I would say he's about twenty to one for the Commonwealth Cup. Do you think that underestimates his chance? I'd say it's probably about right, really. Um, there's a couple of horses that take out a huge percentage of the of the market at the top end, and um, and they deserve to be there. You know, he's got to go and prove it in Europe. Um, he is, as you say, a Wolverhampton winner under a double penalty, apart from his form in Dubai. So we'll see if the form can correlate from Dubai to England, and um, look forward to look forward to seeing it. I think you've already answered this question, but you see, Little Big Bear is the one to beat in that race. I think so. Look, he's a he's a phenomenal physical trained by a genius, and. Um, he looked very, very good at Haydock and I think did it very much in hand. And um, Richard Hannon's horse should have been a ring, obviously pushed him, but um, I think there's plenty plenty left there and he looks a he looks a very hard horse to beat. And you've got Believe in, could she join him in the Commonwealth Cup? She could do. She's um she needs a bit of work with her stalls before she can go there. Um, just reared as the as the gates opened in the group two in France the other day and gave away any chance of winning really. Um, She's shown plenty of pace at home. Uh, the step up to the seven was always going to be a question mark, and she didn't get home in the Nell win. Uh, no, she's she's a high level performer. She's a Group Three winner. She deserves her chance here, and, and Phillies have a pretty good record in the race. And just onto the older horses now, we've got Cadillac, who he's changed yards a few times now, but he looked better than ever at Epsom when, his, uh, when, when he won for you the other weekend. That was actually the highest time form rating of his career that day. Um, yeah. Do you think it was the cheek pieces that did the job there? No, I think I think he's a horse who he's been gelded. Um, he didn't turn up at, at Newmarket on very soft ground. I I didn't really want to run him to be honest, but he needed to get a run in to get him going and get him get his fitness levels up. Ryan Moore looked after him, and um, quietly we hoped he'd run well that day. Um, he seems a better horse left-handed, um, but he was second in the Wolfton last year, so we'll roll the dice and he comes here in super shape. You said they're second in the Wolferton last year. Was that always the plan to go back there as soon as he came in the yard? Very much so, yeah. The um, plan was to go to Dubai this winter and, and he just had a bit of a setback and that had to be sort of sorted out in the winter. And um, But yeah, he's training good and you saw him this morning. He, he couldn't be in better shape. So um, yeah, all roads lead to the Wolferton. And just onto the handicappers now, and we'll start with Baradar, who's ran two massive races for you so far this season. A great effort in the Lincoln, and just a shade unlucky in the Victoria Cup. Do you think? Yeah, I slightly think we got the tactics wrong. The winner was on the far side in the in the Victoria Cup, and if we had stayed over there, we might have been a bit closer. But he worked good this morning. Um, I'd be very hopeful that he'd run a big race at Ascot. The ground has been pretty key to him. 
Um, he's shown notably better form on slower ground, but his work this morning was pretty good. So, look, he go there with a chance, and um, we're very happy to have a roll of the dice. That was my next question. Have you got any concerns about fast ground with him? Yeah, I think look, he's, he's it's it's there in his form. He's not as good on uh, on faster ground, but. Um, he comes here in good shape and there's thunderstorms about, you never know. And Spangled Mac, he was really progressive for you in the UK last year and he was a bit of an eye-catcher at Maidan last time, I thought. He was, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, he's touch and go whether he'll get in the Wokingham, but the Wokingham's very much the plan. Um, six furlongs at Ascot. He ran a huge race under Nicola Curry in the Shogar Cup there at the back end of the year. and I just think the configuration of tracks suit him very well. They've got strong pace. Um, he'll also have an entry in the Buckingham Palace and we'll just have to make an educated call as to where we go but um, he's a bit of a dark horse I think if he gets in the Wokingham I think there's a bit of room in his mark and um, yeah I, I'd be pretty happy with him You've got Koi Koi as well is that another one you think could be sneaking under the radar a bit? Yeah Koi Koi was probably my um, was probably my number one chance and the biggest price for the English Lincoln through the, through the winter and he's been gelded he's, he's training good and He's a very fresh horse. He, he, he hasn't been away. Um, he's fit, ready to go, and he'll probably have to run in the Buckingham Palace off his current mark, um, which might be a shade short for him, but look, he's, he's a horse who, who's got course form, and um, that's very key at Ascot on that straight track. And Concord, he's on a bit of a roll at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, Concord, uh, he's been progressive, more progressive than we thought he would. Um, the ground is probably key for him though. He, his work on faster ground has just not been as good as, as it was on slower ground in the in the spring. So we'll um we'll play each day as it comes, but he's he's working back from the Golden Gates. Step up to ten furlongs I think will suit him and um couldn't be happier really. And tempered soul, he looked really progressive before he disappointed a bit at Goodwood. Do you think that was just a case of him not handling the track or something else? There was a little bit of the track at Goodwood, obviously he's he's not had much racing. Um I think the trip was the big thing though. He just travelled into the race and I thought if he stayed, he'd go very close. Um, obviously the winner's a very good horse and William just said he didn't get home. Um, he might drop back all the way to the mile for the Britannia. Um, he looks almost sure to get in off a mark of 90. And um, yeah, he'll have an entry in the Golden Gates as well as the Britannia, but I'd be favouring the Britannia at this stage. Notice he's also got a Group 2 entry at the Royal Meeting, so you must think there's a bit of scope in his handicap mark then. Yeah, probably. He, he got £3 for, for getting quite well beaten in the cocked hat, so um, he's got to improve again, but look, his work's been pretty solid. He worked nicely this morning and um, couldn't be happier, really. And Naxos, he was so impressive on his debut last year. Do you think? Did you think after that you might have a group horse on your hands here? Uh, he's been set back for the race. You know, When he won well at Newcastle, you know, he was always a Britannia slash Golden Gates horse, and um, I think he, I think he'll go there with a with a live each way chance, whichever race he, he turns up in. Um, he'll have a, he's got an entry in the Goffs London Sale at, in Kensington on the Monday evening, and um, he may well be changing hands before the race. But uh, I couldn't be happy with how he's training into the race. And you've got a few for the three-year-old handicap. Who will be going there? Uh, the sprint handicap. Yeah. Yeah, I think Conquistador. Uh, Danger Alert, who's a winner at Chester, and Thundermore are three horses that look likely to go there. Um, Conquistador is two from two for us since dropping back to sprint trips, and um, very pleased with him. Um, he'll like fast ground, he'll like the stiff finish, jumps and travels, and um, yeah, Thundermore's been been progressive. He's got a better attitude now. He's gelded, and and Danger Alert's been a bit of a surprise package, really. I. I Never thought he'd be a 94 rated animal and um, he worked good this morning. He's progressive, he looked, he's never looked better in his skin and um, goes there with a live chance. And two questions to finish. Your answer may well be the same to both. Firstly, who do you think your best handicapped horse of the week is? Tricky question. Um, we've got a few, I think, you know, horses like, horses like Concord, um, Conquistador, Koi Koi, uh, Tempered Soul goes there with a good chance. Um, Spangle Mac is a horse who I think has got room in his mark if the conditions are to suit, he wants fast ground but yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of horses who look like they, they might have a few pounds in hand but we know quite how much you need at Ascot it's, um, it's a lot of people's goals so yeah, they, those, those would be the live ones And finally, your best chance of a winner next week? Uh, best chance of a winner I think a Sadner is probably going to be the shortest price um, it's probably one of the more competitive races to win at Royal Ascot so it's hard to, to plump for him, but 
he's a horse who's got an amazing mind and um, I think the occasion won't phase him. Him and Soprano would be the two, two nice two-year-olds and um, they're certainly going the right way. Lovely stuff. Thanks for your time, George, and best of luck next week. Top man. Thank you. Get more than just opinion this Ascot. Download the free Sporting Life app today for insight, detailed opinion and analysis, race cards and results too, all at the tap of a finger. Access tips and best bets from our expert team of tipsters, time-form analysis on the big races and the latest insight from our star columnists each day of the Royal Meeting. There's tons to get stuck into, so download the free Sporting Life app today. Users must be 18 or over.